As I said, time for family matters. And this week we're touching on a subject which is one that we don't necessarily want to have to talk about, but we do need to talk about. And that is how to teach our children about safety and security. It is a very fine line to walk between empowering them and sharing with them the information that they need to know to increase their awareness of their own personal security without scaring them and making them paranoid in the process. And how do we find that line is the question. I'm hoping my guest will be able to to guide us in some way. She's Kelly Arrowsmith, the founder and CEO of Advanced Conflict Training. And this company specializes in personal security awareness uh, from training and, and interventions on how to behave, for example, in the event of a hijacking or a home invasion to specialized courses on dealing with the safety of children. Kelly, a warm welcome to Cape Talk. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Pippa. Before we start focusing on the children, can you tell me a little bit about how this company got started in the first place? Well, I uh, I was overseas and I used to compete. So I used to train six to eight hours a day, compete for money on the weekends. Uh, I retired when I was 30. This was competing in martial arts? Competing yes. in martial arts, yep, in America. Um, I then got into repossession. And uh, one day I went to pick up a big screen TV from a lady who didn't want to give it back. And she simply picked me up and threw me down the stairs. Wow. Uh, I was flabbergasted because all of the things that I'd learned over the 30 year odd years were all moot. Mm. I didn't know who the bad guy was. Uh, there was absolutely no warning. There was no referee. She played dirty. And that's kind of when I started. It's probably 15, tw- about 20 years ago that I started to rethink personal safety. Um, my granddaughter came into my life about 14 years ago, just over 40, almost 15 years ago. Uh, and I was already back in South Africa and I realized that I was responsible for her safety. And I really had to start thinking differently about teaching her. Mm. Um, we started to develop the personal safety for children. And once I was kind of done with it, I went and saw a, um, clinical psychologist who specializes in child child children as well as a school teacher and um, they helped me refine it because of course I didn't think about the softer side of things Mm. okay so a psychologist has given input as well as a teacher Uh, plus I mean as you said 30 years of martial arts background you would assume that somebody like you more than anybody else in the room knows how to defend themselves knows how to see it coming and respond quickly Uh, and all of that goes out the window because as you said that 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 goes by a very clear set of rules yeah where you meet an opponent, you recognize each other, you bow, and uh, you play nicely within the ring. And, of course, there's a referee who goes stop when they cheat. <laughs> and that doesn't happen <laughs> Not in real, real life, life, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, my guest is Kelly Arrowsmith. If you have a question for her, the number to dial is 021-446-0567. You're also most welcome to tweet us at Cape Talk 567 or send your question by SMS to 31567. Now, I mean, Kelly, obviously, perhaps more so than in other countries here in South Africa, this is something we are acutely aware of the safety of our children safety from everything from assault to rape to abuse and those kind of things don't always happen in a strange environment at the hands of a stranger in fact more so 80 percent of the time it's not a stranger Mm. it's somebody who's a friend of the family who's in the family or um is a a person in a position of power uh, like a teacher or a a sports coach or Mm. something like that so teaching your child about stranger danger doesn't actually prepare them for anything. Um, your child's safety, and of course, every child is different, mm-hmm. okay? Um, I would say that around four or five years old is the right time to start. Uh, and very important is to plan what you're going to teach them. So you kind of have to figure out what the most important is. Mm -hmm. With a little kid, I would say don't teach them for longer than five minutes at a time because their attention span is very short. Um, And I would start by teaching them about their boundaries. So teach them to set boundaries um, and and make it fun. So, for example, I would have a four-year-old stick their arms out and make circles and say, okay, if anybody comes into your space, you must move away. Mm-hmm. And then practice it with them because it's like driving a car. You can't show, tell somebody how to drive a car. This is first. This is all your pedals and stuff and then go, go. You have to practice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's what people really don't understand. They say, don't talk to strangers. Well, the ice cream guy standing outside the school is not a stranger. 
Mm. Okay, or don't take sweeties from strangers. He's not selling sweeties. So that goes past your child's filter and it says, okay, sweeties, nah, stranger, no, it's cool. Mm. Um, I mean, we've recently seen the, I don't know if you've seen the video that went viral a week or two ago of uh, an experiment somebody did with a puppy in a park. I did. And that was, I mean, that was a child who had been taught, or so the mother thought, exactly what to do and what not to do. But a a man with a cute puppy was all it took to to lead the child away. And that will most likely work with almost all children Mm. because they haven't actually been taught, they've been told. And there's a big difference. You cannot tell somebody how to do math. You have to practice it together. Um, Another thing is, you know, get down to their level and talk. Take a piece of chalk and draw on the pavement about boundary setting. Mm -hmm. Teenagers, most of them when we do talks, you know, will say, okay, uh, and you'll kind of tower tower over them and say, oh, you've got pretty hair. And they'll cringe, but they won't know what to do. But they've been told. Mm. So, you know, we, we encourage f- all, through all the different ages to talk about it, to get to their level, to draw pictures, to sandbox, especially with young children. Um, for example, you can take uh, two dinosaurs and you can be the one dinosaur and they can be the other dinosaur and, and help them to start planning their safety. So uh, you'll kind of be munching the grass and the kid will come along with their Tyrannosaurus Rex mm-hmm. and you go, oh! A Tyrannosaurus Rex, what do I do? And the kid will most likely say, run, mom, run. And so you're starting to teach them to make their own safety plan. Mm. Um, Okay, so then you run and then you get stuck and they go, hide, hide. So they basically know what to do. They just need to role play with you and then stop when they get bored. Don't Mm -hmm. force the issue. Um, You know, and when you're planning your safety, uh, specifically around home invasion stuff, don't say, well, let's pretend two bad guys broke into the house and what do we do now? You have to you have to already know what your plan is first and then you, you, or safe room, for example, can be your chocolate room. And when you practice once a month, say, okay, let's go to the chocolate room. Last one in the chocolate room gets the least amount of chocolate because, of course, you have to eat the chocolate. Okay, otherwise it goes rotten. So you must practice once a month. Okay. So there's a lot to it. Mm. I mean, I think most adults don't have a clear plan in mind. We we live with dread that this might happen, but without actually having allowed ourselves to think about what we would do yeah. if it did happen. So how can you communicate that kind of plan to your child if you haven't made it for yourself? Exactly the point I wanted to make mm. today. Okay. There's really so much to it. Um, but just to start giving you ideas to think about it in your context. So I would say um, think about the most dangers, which is pedophiles. Give your child ways to set boundaries and practice it with them. So you can say to your daughter or your son, oh, come and, you know, uh, you've got beautiful hair. Uh, please don't touch me. I don't like it. Or, or set boundaries in ways that are socially acceptable, but don't allow your child to become a victim. Because mm. we really do, um, we take away all our children's, uh, they get this little gut feel that something's wrong, but you've said to them, you can't be rude. Mm. I was going to say, I'm glad you used the term socially acceptable because we are conditioned to be polite, especially to adults. And that's still very much part of our our upbringing. So how can you uh, put a child and expect them to know when is the time to be prepared to be rude, to shout, to say no, to push a person away when you've been trained that you treat adults with respect and politeness? The, The only way is to experiment with those boundaries, then to discuss it and let them practice it. So don't touch me, I don't like it. And there'll be lots of giggles and laughing and, mm-hmm. and giggle and laugh. You know, you can't keep saying, well, it's serious. It's, you know, you don't want to frighten them. So ha, 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 let's joke, but let's, okay, let's try it again. And we try it again and then you do it to me and I'll show you what I'll do. Mm-hmm. And what do you think you should do? Also ask their, their advice because they really know they're just unsure of how to do it. It sounds to me like you're putting a lot of, uh, uh, of emphasis on letting the child be responsible for their Absolutely. own safety. Yes. Uh, which, which, in a way, sort of, I mean, we, we live in the age of helicopter parenting where everybody tries to hover and do everything for their child. This is a tough one to let go of. Because, I mean, I'm sitting as the mom of an 11-year-old daughter and an 8-year-old son. My instinct is to hold on to them as much as possible, keep them within eye shot. But, of course, you've got to at some point be prepared to let go and trust that they will take that responsibility. That's an excellent point. So, you know, we, we protect our kids to such an extent and then off they go to university 
and you go, love, bye, I love you, stay safe. And the kid kind of goes, love you too. Well, what do you mean stay safe? They, do do they don't have yeah. a clue. So, you know, what, what we as parents need to do is we need to not tell them what to do, but how to do it. And I think that's the fundamental difference. Uh, you really need to plan how you're going to, because you're the best safety instructor for your par- your child. You understand your child. You know kind of what makes them scared. Um, another thing you can try as a parent, uh, this was one of the first things I did with my granddaughter, is she s- said to me one day, Dwayne, what's a bad guy? Mm. And I'm like, uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we took pencils and we big piece of A3, and I said, okay, draw a bad guy. And she scribbled all over the place. She was four. Mm. And I said to her, okay, what is that? And she said, Dwayne, that's Voldemort. Mm-hmm. And that's when I realized that I actually had no way of describing a bad guy because of the, the there's so many different. There's not one. And what I've realized is a bad person is not about what they look like. Mm. And that's what everybody tries. So a stranger is a look, I don't know you. Uh, or he's a, a guy with a balaclava or he's a guy with a gun or he's a guy with a bad guy T-shirt. I don't know. But what I have realized is bad guys is about their intention, Mm. So I will walk past a car, for example, and I will look in the window, but my intent is not to steal. And it's about children and even adults starting to realize how to or or recognize the the intent and thinking about how do I test for that intent, okay? So if somebody comes to me and says, uh, you know, excuse me, do you have the time? And I go, keep away from me. And they say to me, but I'm just asking for the time. Why are they doing that? They know I'm uncomfortable. They're pushing my boundary, Mm. so they're testing me. So we need to think about how we teach our children about setting their boundaries, sticking to them, and then testing for those bad intentions. Okay. Uh, Quite often a pedophile will will have the child touch them first. Okay. Uh, Look what uncle's got. And then the kid is like intrigued. They, don't, they know it's wrong, they know it's bad, but how do they ever tell you as a parent? Well, I touched uncle because they are the bad guy now. Mm. So those are the type of boundaries you need to think about setting with your child. And I know I'm going directly to pedof- pedophiles, but it's one of my pet pets, obviously, concerns. Pets. Yes. Interesting SMS in here from somebody who says, I've done, is it Goju Ryu karate for many, mm-hmm. many years, saying there's a big difference between a sparring slash ring martial arts and a self-defense martial arts. My training has saved me from many a nasty scrap because you're taught that there are no rules in the street. Muscle memory gets drilled into you with the ultimate result of incapacitating your attacker. I mean, you came from, as we said at the beginning, 30 years of martial arts experience which went out the window because there were no rules in the situation you found yourself in do you think nevertheless that it is a good good thing to to encourage our children to do Absolutely. something like karate or judo or, or any other form i think martial arts gives them a lot more than than just the physical okay it mm-hmm. gives them confidence it gives them uh it gives them so many things physically as well mm-hmm. as mentally strength it teaches them to push through when they get tired etc um, and i'm not bagging martial arts at all Okay, mm-hmm. I think it's an absolutely wonderful thing, and just about every discipline, every discipline has really good things and things that aren't so good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it depends a lot on the instructor. Um, if you think about it, uh, an attack, and not necessarily an attack that comes against a child, but an attack that comes in a home invasion or a hijacking, for example, there will be weapons involved, and there will be multiple attackers. And there are very few people in the world, other than, you know, Jackie Chan, hmm. uh, who can deal with those um, those attacks with no weapon. Hmm. So I'm not saying run out and get a weapon. I'm saying you really need to think about where you are vulnerable and how are you going to deal with this, these potential attacks, especially when so somebody sticks a gun in your window, car window. I'm really not going to jump out and kick somebody in the groin Mm. or break their arm or grab their head and smash it against the door because I've got to worry about his buddies. I've got to worry about the weapon and the gun on the other side that's pointed at my child's head. Mm. 
So, you know, as you plan your safety against hijacking and home invasion, you have to include your children in your plan. Mm. I mean, the hijacking, and we've heard the horror stories of when the children were left behind in the car. We had that tragic case last year of the child who was dragged to death as hijackers made off with the car. And again, it's not something, you know, I might have my safety precautions that I take as I drive into my driveway or approach my home. But I can't say I've sat down and planned a strategy of what I would do if it happened. We've, we do a lot of hijack safety mm-hmm. because it's such a big concern at the moment or for the past few years. And I have to tell you that in almost every single training that we've done, the parents have gotten out and left the children. Okay? Yeah. Because when that gun or that knife is in your face, uh, you, uh, you just want to do whatever you can to survive. And it's not that you don't care about your children. Obviously, they're more important than your own life. Mm. It's just that if you haven't planned it, and you haven't practiced it, it's not going to happen. Mm. So we should actually be practicing the bit, the bit that says, my child is in the back seat, please let me take my child out of the car, I'll do what you want, for example. If that's your strategy, okay. and I don't necessarily agree with that strategy. Okay, but I'm going to ask you in a moment what I'm you not would suggest. I'm not going to answer that one. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, we have got a call coming through from Carol in Claremont. Good afternoon, Carol. Hello, good afternoon. I heard something that may be useful. Um, and that is said that if it's a child is attacked or someone tries to grab a child, that child should throw themselves on the floor and kick and scream because it's very difficult to pick up a kicking, screaming child. And so I once practiced that with my grandson. And I hope that he's never had to put it into practice. No, though, he hasn't. But, but, but at least it was quite fun to say if anybody sort of grabs you or you don't want them to, get on the floor and kick and scream. Interesting. And I love that Carol's gone through the process of putting it into practice. I think that's fantastic. Um, Carol, well done. Uh, you know, practicing that with your grandchild has probably given them the confidence, confidence to do it if they need to. And would you agree with that as a strategy, that that is one thing a child can do to signal loud and clear that this person is not somebody who should be uh, trying to grab hold of me, for example? Absolutely. Just don't make that your only strategy because mm-hmm. it won't work against a pedophile. Okay. My guest is uh, Kelly Arrowsmith, founder and CEO of Advanced Conflict Training. If you'd like to chat to her, ask a question or uh, share with us the strategies that you've used for talking to your children and preparing your children on how to de- deal with situations where their security is at risk, we'd love to hear from you on 021-446-0567. 26 minutes past two. We're talking uh, about talking to our children about their security, about teaching them about their personal safety, about setting boundaries and how how to respond uh, when they are under threat. My guest is Kelly Arrowsmith, who's the founder and CEO of Advanced Conflict Training. One of the things that they do is offer uh, training courses in personal security awareness. And uh, uh, probably a good time now to share your contact info, Kelly. If there's anyone listening who'd like to know more or is interested in attending one of your courses, where do they find you? Okay, um, we've got a website, advancedconflict.com. Um, and all our contact details are on there, or you can look for us on Facebook. Okay, we'll pop those uh, those details up on our own website as well, uh, capetalk.co.za. We can squeeze in one or two more phone calls on 21 021- Four four six zero five six seven. If you'd like to ask a question or share a comment on how you've dealt with this in your own home, we'd love to hear from you. Irene in Rondebosch, good afternoon. That's right. Good afternoon. I just wanted to share with you a thought. I had when my children were small, they were on their own for two hours before I came home from work. So I told them not to open the door to strangers, and I decided to um, to test it one day. So without them knowing that I was on the other side of the door, I knocked on the door and very kindly said, can you open the door? I want to talk to your mother. And my son dutifully said, "Um, would you you come back at four o'clock, please? And he wouldn't open the door. And I thought that was wonderful. But then I just decided, you know what? I put my scarf over my head so he couldn't identify me at all. And um, I shouted to him and I said, Open the door, you stupid little boy. I can't stand here all day. I need to speak to your mother right now. And with that, the door opened. Goodness. And it just goes to show it's not how you say It's not what you say. It's how you say it. Mm. And I thought that's also another thing. I had never told them that. You know, they always think that the person on the other side is nice. 
they don't realize that if you said it in a really cross way, that it would have a completely different reaction. Hmm. Very interesting insight. Irene, thanks for making that call. Uh, I can see you nodding on the other side of the table, Kelly. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking, I mean, you can't help but think of, of uh, the Bob Hewitt case right now. There's somebody who would not have been painted as the bad guy, would have been an adult that they knew was not a stranger, was somebody that could be trusted. Had those children had, who knows, the boundary training that you've been talking about, maybe there would have been a different outcome. But uh, I think that emphasizes just... just that teaching our children about stranger danger alone is not enough. Correct. Mm. And we definitely have to set boundaries with them and talk to them. You know, let them talk through stuff. That, and uh, often it's nothing, but you can give them context and you can give them what to do if it was real. Mm. I love the idea of putting it into practice in your home. It's not something I'd ever thought of doing. So if, if, if for nothing else, I hope that you've enjoyed the conversation this afternoon and take that away with you. My guest has been Kelly Arrowsmith, founder and CEO of Advanced Conflict Training. Thanks so much for being with us today, Kelly. You're very welcome. Thank All you right. for your time. We'll pop their contact details up on our own website after the show as well.